right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go on an email that was sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy. He's written me actually a couple times. I've done a couple videos on him, and he was your typical nice guy. But after a lot of bad experiences, as well as the, the, the videos that he sent in and what he's learned from me, the community, this guy's been born again hard as an R pill guy. And now he's helping his bro here who's going through a divorce. His bro sounds like he's in his late 40s, now going through his second divorce. Married to a gal 15 years younger, and she's been treating him like crap and definitely cheating on him. But his bro in this story was like him in the past, typical nice guy who gave up all his interests and hobbies, or most of them, to make her happy. And guess what? You never can make him happy, particularly when you're giving up everything you love and enjoy to, to, to make her happy because that's what she claims she wants you to do. This guy's made a lot of mistakes in his marriage based on the information I'm giving, me, giving here. However, this guy had enough, called her bluff, and now he's divorcing her. And he's going through the process. And so this guy's writing in this about this guy's situation. You know, that I would go over the story and offer some advice to his buddy. His buddy's name is Liam. And that you guys in the comment section could also offer a piece of advice and wisdom to help our bro, another brother on the way. Now, again, his friend here is been his behaviors and actions have put him in the categories of typical nice guy. And we all know what happens to those guys. So we definitely have to, our mission here is to help Liam see the error of his ways, get some perspective from dudes all over the world, and then help him in his journey to get through this divorce and start over. And hopefully after this, he'll be on his path to becoming our pill, or at the very least, much wiser and not your typical nice guy, and he can have a good, happy life. Because he's in his late 40s, he's got plenty of living to go. He says, uh, hi, SSM. I hate being right sometimes, especially now that I'm watching my friend go through a divorce. Thanks to watching your channel and doing work on myself, I saw the divorce coming. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the best I can do right now is help encourage my friend to keep moving forward. There you go. That's the best you can do. Be there for him. Offer him advice. Give him a kick in the pants when he needs it, and he's going to need it. Uh, my friend Liam, a soulless ginger fuck, and I mean that in the most endearing way possible, is a nice guy who makes friends easily. He's done a lot of work in sales, and he's an artist. Liam has two kids from a previous marriage. His soon-to-be ex doesn't want any and has complained that she helped him raise his son. He says his daughter lives with his first ex-wife. So, Liam, your buddy, is now going to be having his second divorce. I hope your buddy Liam understands there better not be a third marriage and third divorce. I get it the first time, guys. We can all make mistakes and all, but getting married a second time and then another divorce? I met Liam in a martial arts class. He showed up pretty infrequently, even though he wanted to be there. I found it, I found it was that uh, his then-wife got jealous at the time he spent in class, and the time he spent painting, and the time he spent helping his parents or kids. But then it sounded like he could never do anything right while he was home, home anyway. She apparently complained that he didn't do enough around the house. In other words, she's always complaining. And, and that part about the infrequent martial arts class, I spent six years in martial arts, and I had friends, people I've known that... Yeah, they loved it, but they weren't there very often because of their wives or girlfriends complaining about the time they spent away from, but they just didn't like their independent guys. I had a friend that would never come more than twice a week. Otherwise, his wife would start bitching and complaining and all that, and uh, he was pee whipped Yeah, I think we can all see where this is going to end up. Liam's soon-to-be ex-wife, <laughs> we'll call her Karen, makes more money than he does, at least on a regular basis. Liam does a lot of painting and goes to a lot of conventions. Some conventions he makes a killing at, others not so much. Liam's also got a book series he's writing. He does voice work and he's been developing, uh, self-publishing a card game. Liam is very creative, ambitious, and driven. Having a few near-death experiences, a congenital heart problem, and a dead brother will do that to you. Well, that's cool. He's very creative and he's very ambitious and all these little side hustles, you know. And I, I like entrepreneurs and I like go-getters, you know. And I think sooner or later, if he can find one of those things that he can really strike gold with, he'll be cleaning it up. But his wife obviously has the steady income, and you, you typically need that. If, if you're going to have a couple that one guy is the entrepreneur, and he can bring a lot of money, then you, it's ideal if the other person can have something steady, you know. Karen, his wife, was only happy when he had a steady job, and then only if he, of course, was making more money than her. Ding, ding, ding. I was going to point that out. If she's making more than him immediately overwhelmingly, she sees herself as running the show. This is why it's always better the guy makes more money. You know, frankly, he'll feel better, and she'll feel like she got herself a prize that way, and she'll make sure her girlfriends know that. And I don't mean, you know, 
$10,000 difference more. I'm talking about a lot. You know, if she makes a hundred grand a year, she wants her guy to make 200, not 110. He says, I got permission from Liam to write this up as well as give, give, giving him a rough draft of the story. And I introduced him to your channel through the videos of my stories. Yeah, this guy has had written in about his own situations. He's now coming along. He says, Liam and Karen were together for a total of 11 years and they were married for seven. She's 15 years younger than Liam, so she was 21 years old when they met. From the pictures I've seen, she was very attractive at the time. And I met her twice and all I can say is meh. <laughs> so, she's lost her looks. And he says, oh yeah, Karen is also a party girl who claims Liam was her first S-word encounter at 21 years old, and she has very left-leaning politics. Oh, she sounds like a joy to be around. A party girl, huh? Yeah, that's real marriage material. So, Liam's 15 years older than her. He met her when she was 21, so she's probably 30... Let me, th let me see here. 15 years younger than Liam... They met 11 years ago, so she's probably 32 now. So Liam's probably about 47 years old. Okay, about my age. Guess what, Liam? You still have plenty of life to live. End, end things with her. Move on. And don't you dare fucking get married a third time. Liam said he can confirm that she was a virgin when they got together. And she was a partying girl. Well, maybe her mouth did all the partying. Karen was also apparently much more conservative. But then her brother came out as gay and went down downhill from there. When I first met Liam about four years ago and heard that his wife was jealous about the time he spent away from her, I thought, well, yeah, it sounds like you spent a lot of time away. But now I see Liam as simply a man on his purpose. He would try to make her happy, but you can't make someone happy. Right. Guys, people can only make themselves happy. And the, 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 the foolish thing is that so many guys do is they try to make their wives happy. And in, in doing so, they make them more miserable. Okay? Because typically the, the guy's way of making the wife happy is pretty much to give up all the things that he enjoys to spend time with her because she claims that's what she wants. If the guy was regularly would hang out with his bros, typically over time it became less and less and less and less to the point that he never doesn't even have any bros anymore. If he had hobbies and interests, over time, less and less and less time to the point that he's not doing those anymore. As well as like if she was trying to, if she would complain about how he dressed, he started dressing the way she wanted him to dress. And, and uh, any number of things put all together. And one day he wakes up and realizes, who am I? He looks in the mirror and is like, this is not, who, what, who, what happened to me? You know? And oftentimes that's when the gal gets even bitchier and bitchier over time, even though he's doing what she claims she wants or what he thought would make her happy. And she's more miserable because he stopped being a man. He stopped being the guy who he was initially. She did, a gal doesn't want a guy so pee whip he's going to change everything and give up everything for her. And this is a very common thing that people do in relationships, not to mention let themselves go physically. And she has a breaking up with a guy and says, you changed. And he's like, well, I did it for you. So, guys, you always do what you want to do. You don't change your attire to make some girl happy. Because newsflash, your attire was just fine when you started dating. You don't give up your bros or your hobbies or your interests or go into the gym to, to make her happy. It makes you happy. You do what you want to do. And she can complain and whine about it. But at the end of the day, notice the guys that they really want, they always complain about them. And yet they stay with them because those guys aren't going to change who they are. They're not going to get pee whipped. So I just got to point that little lesson here for you relationship guys. And if you don't believe me, keep doing what all these other guys do, giving up everything you love, and see what happens. Uh, it says here, Meanwhile, Karen goes on trips with her friends from high school a few times a year to places like Mexico, and Liam doesn't come along. Oh, I'm sure that goes r real well. <clears throat> really because he hates her friends and has almost come to blows on occasions. Oh yeah, this is a mixed group of friends, women and men who sound more like soy boys. So he doesn't like her friends. He doesn't get along with her friends. I'm sure these friends are more than happy to encourage her on these girls' trips to Mexico and other places to uh, misbehave a bit because she deserves it. Because he doesn't understand her. Something like that. It's a terrible situation. On a couple of the trips, Karen came back and told Liam about some sketchy crap. One trip, they were on a boat, and she apparently was on one side of the boat, a houseboat or a yacht, I'm assuming, reading, and everyone else there was on the other side of the boat. They decided to go skinny dipping. She, of course, was shocked and appalled that there was a time she walked in on them, them in a sex pretzel. But, of course, she wouldn't be involved with such debauchery. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I didn't have the wherewithal at the time to tell Liam that that was all BS. And I was like, meh, 
believe your wife so long as she hasn't given you any reason to doubt her. Yeah, spending time away from your husband with, with friends like that is, is enough of a reason. He says, I am a recovering nice guy, as you may recall, but after I started listening to your videos and really coming to, to grips with my ex-wife's almost certain infidelity, I started to see things in Liam's relationship with Karen, and I started to tell him as much. Good, man. You're being a good friend. But the thing is this, is that some guys, as many of you guys are aware, because I'm sure a lot of you guys have tried to help other friends in bad situations, they don't want to hear it. And it's like you can offer your, your counsel, your advice, but if they don't want to listen, they don't want to hear it, okay. Now that's that. Don't waste your breath. But it sounds like here, obviously, this guy wasn't totally wasting his breath. He says, Karen goes on business trips a few times a year. And he says, business trips in quotes. Not necessarily a red flag, but in this context, I think we can all agree that, that it is. Liam said that he, she has invited him, but of course, it's always while he's had, he had work on his own to do and can't leave town. Yeah, that's on purpose. She knows darn well his schedule and he can't leave, but she's in, inviting him you know, to look like she actually cares and wants to bring him along. While I was getting background from Liam, he told me about Karen and how she's always been very controlling and generally argumentative. Liam, being the nice guy, of course, would capitulate to her to keep the peace and show her that he loved her. Smack! I should have smacked him many times today. Saturday morning, I'm a little tired, guys. Yeah, in other words, she's bitchy, she's bossy, all that, and he doesn't do anything to stand up for himself to keep the peace. How's that worked out? That makes them even more tyrannical. Guys, everybody can have a bad day and maybe lose their temper, lose whatever. But it, that doesn't mean that you should take their BS. And if somebody's disrespectful to you, regardless if they're having a bad day or, or just being a pain in the ass, you have to stand up for yourself and check them on it. Because if you don't, they'll get in the habit of treating you badly. And this isn't just uh, girlfriends or wives. This could be family members, friends, acquaintances, co-workers, even clients. You know? So Liam and Karen built what Karen now describes as her dream house. They moved in over a little over a year ago, but now they're selling it as part of the divorce. As part of getting it ready to sell, Liam has been putting in work cleaning the house and putting up some paint and such. Karen actually said to him, wow, if you'd done this before, I wouldn't have pushed for a divorce. Tch. Talk about twisting the knife, huh? Never mind that Karen kept using the divorce as a threat and he finally called her on it and said he was done. Well, good for him. Let me, let me guess, the entire marriage is her making threats that she's going to leave or this, this, or this, and he just went along with it. But remember, he's 15 years older than her, and obviously he thought he got a prize because if she's 32 now, they've been together for seven years, I think. Or, I, fuck it, I can't remember. Whatever it is, he obviously got together her with her in her prime in her 20s. He thought he got a prize, she was pretty, so he was just going to do what he could to keep her around. But learn real quick, it's not worth it. Especially, but then again, she's an a-hole, but also, he was a weak bitch. And I'm saying that, Liam, if you're watching this, I'm, t I'm telling you now, through the, through the description of the story, you were a weak bitch. And you brought along a lot of the misery. But you know what? You had enough, and so I said, good for you. We can all turn shit around. So here we are in the present, and Liam was telling me about how he had to pull Karen's laundry out of the dryer. They're both living in the house until it sells, and he found some black thong panties. Oh, how about that? He says, Karen hates thongs. As far as you know, she may tell you she hates thongs, doesn't want to wear them for you, Liam. But she obviously has no problem for wearing them for Chatter Tyrone. I told Liam, women will make rules for men they see as betas, but for alphas, rules, I don't have any rules. After that, Liam was going through some photos looking for some paintings he's done a while ago. Some new pictures had popped up in the app he was using with Karen being awfully cuddly with some big bearded dude in the, in the Tetons, Tetons. Liam checked the dates, and the first photographs popped up about five days after the, the divorce paperwork was filed. What interesting timing. No way she met a guy that quickly. I mean, they could, a pretty girl could, but still. She's had something going on. Big surprise there. In the time since then, other groups of pictures were dated during weekends. Karen mysteriously was away. There you go. Nobody's surprised. Obviously, she had things going on, on the side. Girl strips, business strips, and stuff like that. And I'm sure this is just who she was. Remember, he said that back in the day. She was a carousel rider, but was a virgin, of course. Karen had probably been monkey branching for a while. Liam had a few possibilities in mind, none of which involved her cheating prior to the paperwork being filed. I let him know cheating was definitely in the cards, especially with how hypercritical she was with him. Right. 
Exactly. And let's remember again, guys, she makes more money than him. And typically, not all the time, but typically, when gals make much more money than their guy, they think that automatically gives them free pass to call the shots, run the show, and they feel like they settled. Uh, this guy makes less than me. Uh, and therefore, I got treated like dog shit. And people can say, well, then why do they marry him? Because they won't have a ring on their finger. Because all their girlfriends are getting married. And their sisters and girls are competitive. And they want the big ceremony, this magical special day. And they settle for some guy. And, well, you know how that story ends. <clears throat> Liam confronted Karen about the guy, describing him and the situation they were in. She played dumb. And then, of course, acted like he violated her privacy when he mentioned the pictures. <laughs> of course. She said, how did you find the photos, Liam? You installed the app on my phone, Karen. But Karen still denies the relationship. Don't believe your lying eyes, Liam. Right. Of course. Liam has been going through a dark time. He's realized just how much his kindness and natural tendency to, to want to make his wife happy has been used to control him. I got no problem, gentlemen, you relationship guys, marriage guys. If you treat your lady well, so long as she's treating you well. If she's kind and loyal and nurturing and supportive <clears throat> fun drama free or you know minimal drama because they're always going to be a little drama there women all these positive things then okay you treat her well too but you don't treat her well and do all these things when she's treating you like dog crap I mean, would you respect somebody who you were treating like dog crap and they kept kissing your ass of course not it's no different women. Women will never love you if they don't respect you. And you have to be a hard ass oftentimes and lay down the law and check them regularly. You have to respect you. It is what it is. And but luckily, he's got an art studio set up now and he started painting again. He told me last week, January 15th, that he hasn't painted since October. And this is a dude that was doing a painting every day or two. More frequently, when he's working on art for his card game. Well, good, good for Liam for getting back into the painting. And if this is a, a, a revenue stream, he's definitely got to get back into it to make money. He sent me a picture of a bold-looking warrior in ornate armor. Feels like some therapy on his part. Liam has been, getting, has been getting back out and doing some dating. He told me he's ready to get his pipes blown out, but he doesn't want anything serious. Just wants to get Karen out of his system. Well, if, if Liam is a typical nice guy, it's not like he's going to just be putting up a sign saying free... D-I-C-K, and have a line of girls waiting for him, you know? Liam's got to work on a lot of his personality traits that made him so nice guy, accommodating, that type, that otherwise he's just going to get walked all over, all over again. Liam called me the other night, really proud of himself. He and the woman in question met through Bumble, a site where women have to make the initial approach. They had a couple of outings, coffee and a walk, then she told him that she wanted to be friends. <laughs> Friend zone on the first date, huh? On just a coffee and a walk, she's immediately friend zoning him. Liam said, okay, but so we're clear, here's what that entails. And then he laid out exactly what their relationship would be like from that point on. The woman predictably backpedaled hard. Ah, oh, so Liam's learning and he laid down the law. He probably said, no, I'm not interested in being friends or anything like that. Have a nice day. Oh, 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 oh. And she, and she backpedaled. It seems like Liam is getting the worst parts of it. He did really have a dark moment when he was seriously con con considering self-deletion. No, Liam, guys, ending yourself over some broad or just feeling like your life isn't anything unless you're married is not the way. Life, you got one shot at life and you got to make the most of it. We all hurt. We all go through hard times, but that strength pushes us. That masculine strength will get us through it, but you can't give up. Talk to people you know. Talk to people that care, but don't give up. He told me that he wasn't sure he could call me. I told him, anytime, dude, especially if it's that bad. <clears throat> I told Liam he needs to bring a date home and make some noise while Karen is around. Then upload some photos of them cuddling, but he says he's not that cold. Smack! Liam, you're going to have to be cold to get through this divorce and not get uh, your ass handed to you. She's cold. Now, however, doing this, bringing your girl home and taking pictures and uploading to the internet so Karen can see, I no, you don't need to do that. That's just, in, in a way, yeah, it's funny, it'll piss her off, but she'll see right through that. And that's being childish, in my opinion. Liam did say that there's a possibility of a business deal happening where he might be able to buy Karen's dream house out from under her. Ah, how, how nice. 
Lee would then sit in the yard in a lawn chair while Karen moved her shit out. When she asked why he's moving out his stuff out, he'd, he'd tell her, it's my house now, get the fuck out. Thanks for reading SSM. I'll make sure Liam gets the video, and I'll pass along any juicy updates. Well, good good story, my man, and I'm glad you're there for Liam, and Liam needs your help. And if Liam can pull this off or he can actually somehow get the house and then, uh, you know, rub it in her face, I think that's worth it. No need to upload pictures of him with girls, but get that house, oh, that'll piss her off. But I would have a very good uh, make sure your homeowners are sure, so homeowners insurance is up to date because you can see this girl going Waco on the house. You know, <laughs> nobody's getting this house. But anyhow, Liam, you're watching this because I know your bro's gonna send this. You made mistakes. We all make mistakes, and you're probably wondering who the fuck are you, some douchebag in the car in the Quicksilver shirt, telling me what's what? What do you know? Well, I know a hell of a lot more than I let out about my personal life, guys. And I've been doing this for four years, and I have 2,500 videos between all channels, and there are patterns. And guys write to me all over the world asking for advice, and they seem it seems to help them. Get out of this marriage. You Take it day by day. Listen to your lawyer. Stick with your bro here who wrote in and follow his advice. Watch my channel. If you don't like me, fine. I'm not for everybody. Watch other channels. Learn where you're going wrong. This nice guy shit where you're a pleaser and kissing women's butts and doing everything and giving up all the things you enjoy to make them happy doesn't work. But get out of this, get through this divorce and start over and start working on yourself. Go back to doing all the things you enjoy and never change anything about you or your hobbies, your interests, your bros ever again to make any girl happy. And by the way, after two divorces and you're probably in your late 40s, never again. Do not fucking get married again. Having a wife doesn't make you a man or define your masculinity or that crap, okay? You're forbidden from me to ever get married again. You want to do relationships down the road, that's okay once you fix yourself. But if you can't trust yourself to get in a relationship without thinking wedding bells again and three times the charm, then don't do relationships. But bro, your story here will help some guys, again, remember, to don't give up who they are and stop trying to kiss the butt of someone that treats you like crap just to get them to like you and love you. It doesn't work that way. That's nice guy pleaser shit. And I'm sure you're well aware who gets all the women the bad boys. Do you think bad boys are kissing their butts and giving up time to hang out with their bros in the gym and their hobbies to make some girl happy? Never. And the women chase after them. So does it mean you have to be what is considered to be a selfish a-hole? Then so be it. Because remember, when a woman's calling you an a-hole, you're doing something right. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think. Give, give, give Liam some advice in the comment section to help him get through this divorce. Give him all some, some verbal smacks for his butt-kissing behavior or kiss of uh, giving up everything. He needs to hear it. Guys learn by getting a smack upside the head, either physically or verbally. That's just how we're wired. And hopefully we can help him. Have a sure like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.